Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is another uh, installment of our how-to uh, series to optimize your charts for eSignal. What we're going to do uh, with this video is walk through how to resize and optimize the charts so you can best see the data that you need to see to make your trading day successful and profitable. Let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, a couple of charts and some of the, uh, some of the ways that we can manipulate the uh, the screens to uh, show us uh, and display uh, the data in the best way so that we can make sure that we can see it properly for our decision making. All right, so what I've done now is I've just uh, just loaded two charts onto the page here uh, by going up to the upper toolbar, selecting new and then charts. What I want to talk about are some of the uh, ways that we can we can change the appearance of the chart to make sure that we can see it the way that we want to. I have a symbol in here loaded right now. I've got the, uh, the uh, NQ futures front month contract. What I want to do here is I'm just going to leave the, uh, the left-hand chart alone here if you can see the cursor. We're just going to, uh, for now, uh, take a look at uh, how we can manipulate some of these things here. And we'll do that on the right-hand chart. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my cursor, place it over the chart that I want to activate. I'm going to right-click after I right click on I'm, I'm going to get a sub menu that pops up. I'm going to choose properties. And after properties is chosen, we're going to get another window setting up. I'm just going to bring that into view here. So what I first want to do is is uh, go to scales and then look at the font size here. Right now the font size is defaulted at 8, which I believe is what comes when you first download the eSignal platform. But sometimes sometimes this proves to be a little bit too small. So we're going to change this to, let's say, 10. I'll take a look at the, uh, the scale here on the right and also at the, bo the bottom axis as well. So I'm going to choose 10. And you can see that the numbers for the scale just got, just got quite, a bit, quite a bit bigger. Let me move that out of the way. This is the unadjusted chart with the 8 font. Now here's 10. And you can see the numbers get quite a bit bigger. So definitely easier to read. Uh, the only thing is it does take up just a little bit more space, but there are ways to uh, kind of circumvent that a little bit. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. The other thing that uh, sometimes happens is the, uh, the data window is important. If you want to see, if you wave your cursor over the particular candle, you want to say, okay, what was the high of this day? If I, if I put my, can my cursor over that candle, the, the data in the window is going to reflect that candle. So the high of the day was 32, 13, 25. But sometimes these numbers are a little small, so we can we can manipulate that and adjust that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring down the uh, property box again, and this time I'm going to move the uh, selection to the data window. You can see the data window was set at an 8 font. You can change that to a 10 font, and now it's going to be it's going to be quite a bit bigger. And you can see these numbers are the same size and font as the other one. So now if you want to see that high, it's 31, it's uh, 32, 13 and a quarter. A little easier to see. Another thing that we can do, though, is sometimes uh, the this box, especially if you have the chart set up a little bit smaller, tends to take up a lot of real estate. There's another little trick here that I, I really like, which is if you, if you stay within properties and then data window, there's a compact mode. And if you choose compact mode, what's going to happen is, if you take a look at the data box here, all these are spelled out. If you go to the compact mode, it's going to abbreviate everything, and it really makes the box a lot smaller for the data window. So once you get comfortable to, to understanding what the, what the abbreviations stand for, this is a good way to go, especially when you have multiple charts open on one page, especially for your, uh, for your intraday, intraday charts. This can save a lot, of, a lot of space and make it just a little bit easier to move around throughout the day. All right, now one other thing that can be very, uh, very helpful uh, throughout the day when you're trying to uh, just get a quick, quick glance at what the high of the day is, the low of the day is the, uh, is the status line. What I'm going to do here is take a look at the stat at the uh, status status line, and you can see here that uh, it's it's got a fairly small font. You can you can expand this as well to make that just a little bit bigger. I actually prefer to keep mine smaller because I don't really use it that much. And the other thing that you can do is you can also abbreviate it by hiding some of the additional information. So just put on there what you need. Now, as far as getting to the 
highs and lows of the day, you want to choose your snapshot bar. Once the snapshot bar has been activated, okay, I like to have mine at 10, just so it's a little bit easier to see. Once you center it, it works pretty well this way. This is going to show you today's open, the high, the low, and the last, and also the net change on the day. And you can also change the colors and the transparency if you wish. One of the things that you can do is you can make it make it invisible so it doesn't show at all, which is how it was set up originally. Or you can auto hide it. And so if I click on another window, what's going to happen is it's just going to drop off the chart. And that sometimes can save space on uh, charts that you have that are real small when you're trying to put a, a number of charts, have them on top, especially for your uh, smaller time frame, frame charts intraday. But for now, we'll leave this back at always visible. One of the little key here, I'm going to close this box. One of the other key is you can move the data window wherever you need it. So if you've got a chart that uh, is covering up data, you can move that wherever you need it, and it will, it will stay there. So once you make these changes uh, to make them the way you want, you make it bigger, make it smaller, you can also change the, the size of the candles. You can left-click on the bottom here. You see I've got a hand and a bar. I can actually make these candles bigger or smaller and see more or less of the time axis so you can make this to uh, to show exactly what you need to see more or less whatever suits your uh, your particular trading uh, style once you've once you've kind of set all this stuff up what you want to do is you want to go back to properties if you, and if you want to see your default set this way go to edit chart go to default and you can set this as your default if you wish so once you kinda have a baseline to how you like your your charts to pop up how, how big the font you would like to be or small uh, you can set it as your default and when you uh, call for new charts it will come up uh, with these settings in place for you so you don't have to go back and do this each time okay so just to recap what you want to do is if you want to manipulate the uh, the way your charts look you want to go first to uh, chart properties you want to right click on the on the window on the chart that you want to change then start with your scales and then select the font size that you wish Then, if you want to adjust the data window as well you can change the font and then also uh, activate the compact mode which I kinda like uh, and also this the status line you can change the font and you can also and you can also manipulate the snapshot bar, which we looked at last, which gives you the, the high, low, last, and that change on the day. That one works the same way. You just have to make that, make that selection. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. If you have any, uh, if you have any questions, you can, uh, you can contact me through TradeSite, and I'm always happy to uh, answer your questions. It's rich at TradeSite.com. All right, folks, um, thanks for listening, and we'll see you again for the next installment.